My name is Landon Mams. I'm performing I'm going to be, today we're going, from PE 570. Today we're going to be videoing uh, some lifts and some jump training for our, my athlete. This is for a 12-week 12, 12 off-season training program. Um, we start off with some measurements on our subject, and then our athlete will perform some uh, medium weight, medium intensity lifts, and then I will observe him and, and then correct him on his form, and she'll give him examples if necessary. Okay. If you will come over here, we'll go ahead and get started. First, first measurement we're going to take, first measurement we're going to take is the subscapula, which is below the shoulder blades. It'll turn around here for me. All right, go shirt up so I don't get anything extra. All right, right through here. Right below the shoulder blade. All right. Get a reading there of 26. So write that down. Reading there of about 28, and another reading of 28. Next is the, is the super ilium, which is his right above his hip bone. Look at that here. Gives a reading of about 38. This reading got about 32. Go one more time here. Got another one of, of 32. For his chest, we'll take it right in between. We'll take the measurement halfway in between his nipple and his armpit here. It'll be right in through here. All right, for this first reading there, we have a reading of 36. That time we get a reading of 30. Back one here. Get another reading that time of 30. For, for his thigh, we'll test halfway between his hip and his knee. Pull up here. Vertical pinch. Got a score of 24. That time we got a score of 32. And that time we got another score of 32. There's tricep. Right. We score of about 30. Twenty-four. 
last time on the tricep. Twenty-eight on his abdomen. Turn around for him. Go here on his belly button, just just to the side of his belly button, with the vertical pinch. A score of twenty-eight. Yeah. And we got a score of 30. That time we get another score of 30. And for the last one, we will have we were going to do the mid axilla, which is his rib cage. Just put that arm up there. Vertical pinch. He has a score of 20 on this first one. About 24 on the second test. And the third and final skin caliper test gives us a score of 26. Okay. Now, for his first lift he's going to perform is the squat, the back squat. Go ahead. And one more. Okay. Right. Right. First, what I can see off that first one here. It's first, but your heels kind of come up when you start to come up off the ground, so you need to try to get your hips might have to wipe your feet out a little bit more. Try to focus on sitting and sitting back with your butt. First thing is to unlock it is your hips. And then it might almost like you're trying to close your uh, close the door of your car with your butt. Kind of step back and it will force you to keep your heels down. And that will keep everything up to your depth. It's very good. You're getting right at their level where your hips are getting in. Your, you're getting on the at parallel or below it's what we need for football training. So that's what we need to go to. So just try one more time, just try to maybe widen your feet out to what wide and then point your toes angling out just a little bit. Not, not quite straight ahead, not quite but somewhere between about 30 degrees. I'm not quite all the way out. Yeah, that looks good right there. Just to focus on trying to keep your heels down. For the athlete's next lift, we're going to perform the shoulder head or shoulder or overhead press. Yeah, that was what we call a push press. We you bend your knees a little bit. So that, but this time, what we try to do is try to keep you can keep you can keep your feet a little staggered if you need to, but try to keep your try to keep your knees straight. Don't uh, don't bend them when you don't use you don't use your legs to push up over your head. Try to keep your body. Try to keep your you can, uh, try to flex and clench your butt and your thighs, and that keeps your legs still. That will keep you from having that keeps you that keeps you off right, right in through here like this. Okay. That's what we come up. We'll come all the way down here to our chin, like you did. We go all the way up with a full extension of our heads. And when you get up here, uh, you want to poke your head through the door. That's like you, when you get up here, it's going to cover. Your, make, make sure, make sure biceps cover your ears. That way, it puts your active shoulders. If you just do it this way, you don't get the full motion with your shoulders in. When you come up here, you put your, it puts the rest of your, all of your, all of your shoulder in motion. That way. So if you just try that. You just, Right, right, not pushing, not using your lower body at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Head to the door, good. Two, three, 
And one more, please. Cool. Very good. Thank you. The next lift athlete is going to perform is bench press. I'll move behind to the assistant spot. Shoulders look good. Most people, what they try to do, what they tend to do is tilt your shoulders far out, but you keep your stuff in. If you don't have your hands too far apart, if you still keep the ball, you can. Something that will track and it might will help you um, get a more, more stable base on your back, your upper back. If you breathe in, bow your chest out, keep your chest bowed out with it. That'll keep everything nice and tight and keep your, keep your chest cavity, um, keep everything nice and tight. And let your, your lats be a shelf and stable foundation for you to bench off and press off of. So we'll go again, you can just do uh, another five reps more whenever you're ready. Good. Four, five, very good. Thank you. Next lift the athlete's going to perform is going to be the conventional deadlift using the barbell. Deadlifting is one of those, and you're doing a, a pretty good job of it. Is when you, when you drag, when the bar comes up, you almost want to drag it straight up your chin here, just like and that's just about what you're doing. Um, you see a lot of people that do deadlifts uh, quite often. They have a lot, and my my legs are indicative of that. You can see some scarring and stuff on my shins. Um, everything else looks pretty good. You don't want to have your hands too wide. Um, you might can widen your feet out a little bit, but you're you don't have your shoulders aren't super wide, so you you feet, feet really little bit. You want your feet to be about the same width as you would when you finish a vertical jump. You don't want to get too far wide, far too close and get it. So your feet are right in the middle, they look very good. Um, your butt does not shoot up high. Everything else looks good. So if you just try to when you come up, uh, you're set up for it. A lot of people like to walk up to the bar. You need to get, get the bar set up over the tongue of your shoe here. You have your feet about halfway, to not quite shoulder width. You can turn them out just a little bit. We'll put more uh, emphasis on the glute muscles in your butt. You come up, go pick it up here, and then stand. And when they come from here, they stand up with it. You, pop your butt, you don't want your butt and your legs straighten out first. You don't want to shoot your butt up first. You do a very good job of that, keeping everything nice and tight, which is what we, which is what we want to see. So if you just try to go through another uh, two or three reps with pulling it, make sure you try to keep it pulled straight up the body there. Um, it will scrape your shins a little bit, but what that does is keep it uh, in line. It keeps the weight in line, but you may line your body. It doesn't get too far out front, which will put stress on your back and everything else. If you can go through and do the, uh, just do two more reps with that, please. The next lift athlete we'll be performing is the power clean from the floor. You can do clean the weight up, 
and catch it in a power position, which means his hips are not going to drop below parallel like they would like they would have been full clean. That's always easier if you, when you come up and you, you try to catch it. You come up, you come up as fast as you can, and don't worry about trying to catch it with your hand to grip completely around the bar. Now, when you come up, you can just almost catch it up here in the back here, the fingertips up here. I mean, not necessarily the fingertips, but it, 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 you don't know, have to be wrapped around it. Uh, a lot of people, when they come up, it's going to finish it just like you would in the front squat where your elbows are high and everything's kind of rested back here in the fingertips. So that, that's where that's why we do a front squat to get the up right now. And if, you know, and with a power clean, you don't have to catch it to all the way down here with it. Power clean is just simply coming from the floor. And the catch it here. Make sure that you drive your heels down to the floor. That will help transfer, transfer everything. Don't try not to go backwards. I don't think you went backwards that time. But when you go to set up for a power clean, you know, have it. You keep the setup very similar to a deadlift. You set up here, keep everything nice and tight. And then when you go to lift, you want to bring everything straight up and all this wants to be, it's almost like you're, when you set it straight, everything straight up, you almost want to pull your shirt up, that keeps everything close to your body. And you don't want to bring it all the way out here. When you come in here, you want to bring it straight up and almost where it pulls your shirt up your body. All right, now I'll show you an example of, of a power clean or quick it is a lot easier to show than to tell sometimes, or it's easier to put in the words. So you set up here, just similar, very similar to the deadlift. When you come up, you try to kind of explode up fast. You see, I catch up here onto my fingertips. I'm not really trying to, I'm not catching it. I'm trying to keep my elbows high. Mm -hmm. Stop in the middle. On the way back down, you can go ahead and go through that uh, one more time. Just do, just do three reps this time. All right. Up, trying to keep your elbows up high with it. The higher your elbows go, the less uh, it, it puts stress on the wrist, but the higher your elbows go, the less stress you put on your wrists. Our main, the main lifts of our of our video and our demonstration. The next lift the athlete will be performing is chin up for the uh, supinated grip. The difference between, like I was saying earlier, the difference between a, a pull, to, uh, between chin up and pull up. Chin up is the pro, the supinated grip, which is where your hands are, your palms are facing you. Uh, a pronated grip, the palms away. That's what we call that's what most people call pull up. And it's easy to train for core down too for a, a larger athlete, or someone who doesn't have as much relative strength. <coughs> but um, your, your chin up and the, the supinated grip will put a little more stress on your bicep. Helping the bicep muscle a little bit more than, than the 
Well, when they both would build it, but because of the difference in grip, that where that's the difference in grip. The muscles that work, they both work the lats, the lats and the biceps as well. When you come in bottom, you're setting down, shoulders good. When you go up to the top, don't try to um, You didn't do it to that last round, that's because it was getting tough. Um, you don't have to, don't reach your, don't try to reach your, reach your chin up because that puts everything else out of the right. Just try to keep your chin solid. Pull it up as high as you can. It's, this time, you can just get, just give up, go up. two more reps this time. One, just get one or two more reps, and then we'll be able to move on to our next one. Straight up and down, good. One, that's fine. One corner. That's, I know chin-ups are a very difficult exercise for, some, for, for us to do, and we'll get better as we train through those. All right, the next lift the athlete will be performing is the tricep dip or the, the dip. So your, everything looks good. You're keeping your chest bowed out. Everything's good. Try to make make sure when you get all get all the way up to the full, like you're trying to squeeze squeeze your tricep, get a good flexion at the top, and don't lean to your main favorite straight up and down move. Usually when people get fatigued, they start to collapse over. So make make keep a an effort, conscious effort to keep everything straight up and down. It keeps the more forward you lean, the more stress you put on your shoulders and your chest. And if you're doing it. Do, do it correctly, it's all right, but our purpose of building triceps up, of building the dips up is to work on the, work primarily on the tricep muscles and helping with our, with our overhead pressing strength. So to make sure that you come all the way up so that you get a full um, extension of your tricep there. So you, this time you just get uh, five more and just go make sure you go all the way up this time. So it's different. Next, we'll, we'll be moving on to more uh, single jointed and more auxiliary lifts. All right. The next athlete, the next lift athlete will be performing is the stiff leg or straight leg deadlift. Everything looks good um, on, the up, on the up part of the lift. Everything looks real good. Biggest thing um, when we go down, we get, it's almost kind of like I said on the squat, we kind of want to push back. That way, put, make, make sure that we get some emphasis on our, on our butt, our hamstrings, and our lower back. Um, that way, it helps more. It will translate over to the regular deadlift more. That's what this is an assistance for, helping your grip in your back and your, and your butt and hamstrings up, which helps with the dead, regular deadlift. We, Grip helps with everything, chin ups and um, back, and everything. it's all kind of connected in there with it. So when you go down, make sure it's almost again, so we did on the squat, push, push down with it, push your butt back, like you're trying to close your door. And that, keep, you, that keeps everything down, everything makes sure that your chest, your chest is bowed and uh, back is arched all the way through the up part, and make sure you don't lose that all the way down as well. <clears throat> Whenever you're ready, you can do another. Uh, three reps for me.
That concludes the straight leg deadlift portion of our demonstration. Next lift athlete we're performing is the walking lunges, uh, holding our dumbbell, holding dumbbells down at our side. Thank you. The next lift athlete we'll be performing is the dumbbell bicep curl. When you're using a, a barbell, you always you're always gonna have to obviously keep your hands out here. For the dumbbells, if you do it by using the dumbbells, that you can get the full range of motion. So when you go back, you don't have to keep your hands down here with it. You don't have to keep that uh, that supinated grip. You can have it turn it into a neutral grip and then rotate on the way up. That way you get the entire you know, go look like that. That way it gets a little bit more of the rotation. And when you come up at the top, if you'll just uh, Turn it just a little bit. Turn the turn the bell out just a little bit. That make that force a little bit more contraction or whatever. The whole point of these uh, doing curls that they, they don't really transfer that much over to football and to athletics, but they do help um, with the higher reps that we have programmed. They're going to help um, provide a they'll help provide a, get a lot of uh, get a good pump in your arms and they'll help you give up take the, thicken up the tendons and the ligaments and, and the joints here, which will help keep things from getting it coming. Uh, Broken or, or, or tearing ligaments or whatever, like that. So you just, just do the uh, four reps again with each arm for me this time. Okay, there um, we can go. <clears throat> it's because I know it's because you get muscles are getting fatigued from all the other lifting we've done. Um, we, you can lighten the weight up a little bit. It's easier to keep, try to keep your elbows pinned in by your side here. 
have to force more on the back forces more um, productive more focused on the bicep that when you have to bring them out it kind of puts a little bit of your shoulder and your shrug and almost like a shrug up to it but at the end of the workout and for the purpose of our with the, our purpose of doing the curls it's not going to make that big a difference but in your future life when you want to really build focus on building up your arms build up your arms try to keep your elbows nice and tight in here really right, that's good the next lift athlete we're performing is the overhead uh, extension for focusing on the tricep. Shoulder uh, flexibility, so it's, everyone wants to always their, their arms to flare out. Try to keep them. the more you keep your elbows to the front, it's like on bench press. If you let your arms flare out, you can put some tension on your shoulder, put some stretch on your shoulder with you. So it's the same thing with this lift. If you lift your arm, if you try to keep your arms in line here, it puts less on your shoulder, blood stress on your shoulders. You can that way you can isolate the, uh, the tricep muscle more. And what I found, I me mean, whenever I pick it up. I'll try to pick it up with one hand and I to wrap my thumb around it here. Let me try to get the snake in the back. I'm always going to swing it around like, 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 a, like an axe. And we'll just pick it up right here. Right here. Trying to get the trying to get that way you don't have to try, try to pick it, try to jump it up through your hands, which, is, which can be dangerous. But if you miss the sound of that, it's going to fall and hit you on the back of the head. That's not what we want to do. So go ahead and what you just do. Uh, yeah, you just pick it up like in that crook of your thumb there. Wrap that around it. I'll pick it up here. It's a little bit different. You just wrap right the curve of your thumb around it here with one hand in the other. Swing it up and over your head here. And that way you already set up here. You can try to keep your elbows straight ahead. Everything else will be going to be head to everything else. Next one. The next lift athlete will be performing is the bent over rows, bent over rows using dumbbells. Do. You, you do a good job about pulling everything back like you're supposed to. Remember, in everything we do in the way we're always going to want to keep our chest bowed out. That sets our, that sets our shoulders and it keeps us from um, falling forward too much or, or hunching our back or arching our back over. So always try to keep our chest bowed out, keep our back arched in here, um, and then pull them up here. And then when you come up to the top, give a little bit of a pause. You want to try, you're doing a good job. Most people, they don't, they don't try, they don't use their back so much. Um, they will use it. You want to try to squeeze a pencil in between your shoulder blades. There. So when you when you go up and you when you come up, make sure you make sure you set your uh, make sure you set your shoulders and arch your back, lower your chest. It's all the same thing. And then you, when you come up here, give us give a slight pause and you go down with it. Mm -hmm. Keep our chin, our face up. Good. Good. And on both things, I didn't tell you the first time, we, we, we try to keep our chin and our face up. 
that keeps their keeps us leaning too far forward. It keep, it'll help us keep our balance a little bit better. If we're trying to stare at the floor, um, we might lose our balance and not be able to feel everything. But if we're up here, it also transitions more over to the game because we don't ever you know we don't ever want to do anything with our head down in the game. So we try to do everything here, and it's going to be very similar to almost like the, the second pull and a power plane. Um, and in the deadlift as well, you always keep your chin, keep your neck packed, keep your neck stiff, and that way you're not leaning over. And it helps keep your, again, it helps keep your shoulders, um, it helps keep your shoulders set and get everything else up. So go through it one more time. Everything, everything else is good. Just try to keep your eyes up this time when you go. The next lift athlete to be performing is the shoulder shrug using the barbell. We also have the dumbbell shrug uh, programmed in, but the lifts are carry over the same exact motion. Start from the floor. Pick up. Make sure we the shoulders up to the ears. Good. Let's do about five more reps. Good with that. We're always going to, again, we're going to try to focus and bring in our shoulders up to our ears. What this does is build our traps right here up. Um, helps us look really good in a t shirt. And it also, these muscles help us absorb the shot when you get hit in a, in a uh, in football game. You know, you play linebacker and you get hit when the lineman comes to hit you, or you make that big throw back in the hole. If what it, and you, instead of getting a concussion, these will help us act like shock absorbers. Um, your head doesn't jerk back and it builds the whole upper upper back up right here. And it helps like I said, it also helps us look really good when we put a lot of t-shirts in. So. Um, so the biggest thing is when we go up, when you, when you go up, and I know we're not doing a jump throw here, um, when you go up, try to pull, pull them up, and, you know, and it allows you to pull them up a little bit higher to pull your chin when you go at the top. When you pull your chin down in your chest, when you go down, everything looks straight ahead, and when you come up, it goes down like that again, right? Okay. Just, just do it. yeah, just like that. So we'll go with uh, about five more reps here, and then um, we'll move on to our last one, the uh, standing arm jump. Look straight ahead until you come up with it. Uh, and here we go. Straight ahead. Yeah. Try to really pull those shoulders up to your ears. That's good. All right. The next lift, that's, that concludes our lifts for the uh, resistance training. The next is moving into our plyometric uh, training. First lift we're going to be performing is the box jump. Let's go ahead and just get three reps on this one. Since we're not um, programming a bunch of these back to back to back, so perhaps us jumping down is fine. Or if you ever in, in, the, in the future, if you're ever in a class or whatever that has a bunch of them uh, jumping down, when you jump down off of it, you put a lot of stress on your Achilles tendon. And so what we want to do when we jump up, we'll usually um, we'll, if you come down in a more controlled manner. We we'll just try to kind of step down. Um, you're doing good with the, the landing, the, the standing, getting all the way up on the top. You don't have to, and I know the box is kind of narrow, um, the track is a little shape. When you come up, you don't have to bring your feet, you don't have to jump from here and do everything else. Try to keep your feet, you know, just like we did with the power clean and everything else. I know, I know, I know they'll have to come in a little bit because of the shape of my box, but when you jump up, you're doing a good job of using your arms and using your hands to explode up off the floor, get that good, that good extension with the, with the triple uh, extension. When you come up and you land, you don't have to, you don't, the biggest thing is you don't have to you don't have to land. 
you can see it all together. You can spread them out. You can have them whatever's comfortable and feels that way. So I'll just do uh, three more reps with it this time. Good. I start to stick, stick this a little bit closer to the box in here. They may not have you. They might have a bottle or a board as much as Good. Good. Whenever we land, we jump. Whenever we do our jump training, our fly majors, we want to try and almost kind of land on our heels. That keeps the stress off our knees and everything, um, which is helping. I know it's, it's easier, it's a little bit uh, harder to do that when we're on a, a little bit more difficult, more of such a sub maximum you know, for you. But um, whenever we jump, we just try to land, focus on landing. We got on our heels. So you just, you just do that one more time. Just try to focus on. Just do, you just do the one rep this time. Uh, just try to land, land soft on your toes and more, more so here on your heels. Good. That puts everything. See so that translates everything over down. Just like when we do our power cleans there, we want, to, we want to drive our heels to the floor. That's the same thing. We're driving our heels. It's helping us drive our heels to the floor here. All right. We'll go ahead and move this box, and uh, we'll start. We'll go to the um, and we'll go ahead and move right on into the next one, which is our standing long jump. Um, we can just start one of those lines there. Right, if you're not falling, you're not you're landing in an athletic position, which is what we want. Um, I know in track, we you know, you've done some of the jumpings in track before. When you, when you, you know, you fall backwards, you fall backwards, and you touch your hand, that's what they measure. So if you, when you land, you want to stick the landing like you are, that way you're not uh, you're not falling either way that translates to that way. That's what it feels very well. So that was, that was, looks very good for uh, a long jump. The next lift athlete uh, will be performing the next uh, training exercise is the uh, squat, uh, jump and reach. It's part of our fly matrix training. Go ahead whenever it's uh, do uh, three reps. One. Two. It, um, we're treating it like, like it's a vertical jump test. Uh, we don't have to go in. We want to go kind of quick in between them, so not reset, take forever down. Okay. It's, it's like we're trying to get rebound of basketball. The ball, the ball's been shot up there. We're trying to get back up there fast. We don't have enough time to sit and swing with everything. We want to come down and land firm and then go make sure make sure we want to reset but not take too long. Right. That makes sense. Want to land? Yeah. Okay, so if you go ahead and just do that one more time with us there. Two, good, three. That's exactly what I'm exactly what we're looking for. Uh, the next one we're going to move right on into is called the, uh, it's the split cycle squat jump. Um, it's going to be where we're down in just a lunge without any dumbbells or anything. We're going to be a little bit like we're hitting a knee, and then we're going to explode up off that and go to the next one here. Like we're going to be down on the knee here, and then we're going to come up and go okay. down on the knee there. Okay, we just do, uh, just give me three reps on each side of that one. Last one, look, we're how we anytime we do, we don't have just like you, you said, you notice, um, bring your arms up, just it helps translate better over into the running it's an explosion drill, just like running sprint. It's explode, it's all testing the explosion. Um, we've got one foot, one foot up, so we want to work that, make sure we you know, reinforce that opposition there. Just uh, make sure you remember to do that opposition, that arm leg opposition, and do uh, just give me two more on each side there with that, please. Do the op say opposition, I mean, we want to go right leg out. So, we'll, so when this leg comes out, the other one will come like It's like when we run, we don't have, it's not, we don't work the same side. It's almost like we're crossing the right. Mm -hmm. 
you want me to do. Oh, yeah, just go back to back drop it in at that point, please. Right. Uh huh. Good. Good. All right, we'll jump and make sure we get all the way up. Next one is, um, the next one we'll do is a squat jump. Um, that's the same thing we're doing now that we did earlier with the jump and reach, but we're not reaching up for anything. So we're just going to sit here. I'm just going to sit here, drop drop down into a, a regular squat without the barbell on our back off. So we're just going to drop down into the squat and try to explode up as high as we can. Make sure it helps us get exploded up higher if we use the swing arms up when we go up, so just like we do in the long jumps there. Good. Two. Three. Good. All right. The next one we have in our uh, program is a power skip, where it has done through space. Um, we'll, it's just like a regular skip, like we did when we warm up for practice, except that with a power skip, we're going to try to get up as high as we possibly can each time we begin. Reinforcing that opposition here on the side. So if you just go from here, just start at that line there, and then just do a few down through there, we'll get it to where we're See if I can get it. Hold the camera steady. All right, go ahead. That's good. All right, come back for me one more time, so I'll try to watch a little bit better. Good. All right, that's good there. It's just like we've all we've done those a bunch before. It's just like we always do. We're trying to warm up. And that again, that all reinforces um, that, that leg drive which we use in sprint. And that's why we keep doing those um, those there. And then the la uh, the last two we have are for upper body. Um, it's going to be using our medicine ball, which is put it over here. You put it over here, okay. The last two we'll, the last two we'll be doing it are the upper body plyometrics. Um, the chest pass and overhead pass. The chest pass is gonna be just like we do in basketball, um, just like just just same way we do in basketball here, and pushing it out, catching it there. Okay. Good. When you when we catch it, um, help us translate better over into the game in, in the football at least. We're trying to not catch it at a full extension here, um, since you'll have a partner with it. You push and you want to catch it here, like you're trying to stop a. Uh, Somebody a blocker that's trying to come at you, you know, like you, or, or if you're a playing running back um, or playing offensive line, that's why we try to catch it here. Like we're trying to punch as part of our pass protection, or we're trying to punch and make keep keep a blocker off of us. Um, that's what we'll have here, where that keeps everything nice and solid, so we're not absorbing everything. We're trying to stop it out here in front of us. So we're just going to do these here with us. Right. Good. Good. Give a strong push out, just like we do in basketball. Good. All right. The last one here, last one you get to do is overhead pass, um, just like it is in basketball. Bring it over your head, and then you're going to slam it, and then you're going to uh, slam it forward here. So just like that. There, just like we're almost like we're snapping the ball. Like you point your warm up snapper. Good. Try it one more time. Good. All right. And as we move on, you know, we'll go for more, we'll go more from distance. Or for reps, um, that's part of our training program. Now, obviously, the, <clears throat> obviously, if you want to go for more distance, you'll sit and throw the ball as hard as you can with it here. Really, really get a good, uh, really sling it really far. You try to use as much power, as you know, much explosion of your upper body as you can. But that concludes. That concludes all of our lifting programs. Um, we've already covered it's, it's the flexibility and everything with him. Uh, flexibility is, is stretching that we'll do every day. Um, before, we'll do dynamic mobility and stretching before every workout. And then we'll, we'll as, as part of our warm up, and our cool down will consist of uh, static stretching. So that's how we get our flexibility and all that in every single day.